Thanks for tuning in to Christ Fellowship Church on YouTube. We're so blessed that you've chosen to take some time out of your day to spend it with us. We hope you enjoyed this week's message. Peace, be still. Some of the most famous words ever spoken by Jesus as he quieted the storms out on the Sea of Galilee and instantly the winds and the waves were stilled. But it's also the words that he spoke to a group of people that had self-quarantined about a week after Easter. Sound familiar? It was the group of disciples that had gathered in a room with the windows and the doors closed. Now they weren't scared about a virus getting them. They were scared they'd be the next victims of the Roman soldiers and the spiritual leadership of the time. And so they were hiding out and Jesus comes without even knocking at the door, without even opening the door, he comes walking through the door into the room. And then the first word out of his mouth, peace. He says, peace be to you. And I imagine they were already scared to death. And then Jesus comes walking through the wall and they're probably freaking out. So no wonder he said, peace be still. Peace be to you. Don't worry. But when you read the teachings of Jesus, he's very often repeating himself and telling his followers, don't worry. Don't let anxiety and worry find its place in your heart. He says, my peace, I I give to you. And what I want you to know is that right now today, whatever you're up against, whatever you're personally facing, Jesus, the Prince of Peace, wants to walk into the room you're in. And he wants to give you his peace, a peace that the world cannot take away. And that's what happened in this room. In the the Gospel of John in chapter 20, Jesus walks into this room. And in this room, there is a man that you probably have heard about. He's a man that we can all relate to. Even if you haven't read much of the Bible, you've probably heard of this guy. His name is Thomas. You might know him as Doubting Thomas. Now, this is the second time that Jesus is going to show up in this kind of a room with his disciples. But the first time, Thomas wasn't there. He he somehow missed his men's crew group hangout that day, right? And so he wasn't there when Jesus had showed up earlier. And when the other disciples finally come to Thomas, they're saying, hey, we saw Jesus, he's alive. And Thomas is like, well, until I see him myself, he says this in verse 25, unless I see the the nail marks in his hands. And I put my finger where the nails were and my hand into his side, I will not believe. So this is now the second time after he's made that statement that Jesus comes walking in the room and Thomas is there. And this is what it says. Eight days later, his disciples were again inside the house and now Thomas was with them. Jesus came through the doors that had been barred and stood among them. And he says, peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger and see my hands and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. And look what Thomas, Thomas answered him and says, my Lord and my God. Now, it's easy to to jump on Thomas. And I remember as a kid hearing preachers preach sermons about don't be a doubting Thomas, right? But when you think about it, Thomas had, had given up everything to follow Jesus, He thought Jesus was going to come and establish his earthly kingdom, that that the Messiah would establish his rule on the earth a a certain way. Certainly he wouldn't die between two thieves on, on a cross. What I want you to see is it didn't turn out the way Thomas thought it would, the way he expected. Jesus had let him down gone back on what he had said. I mean, how could he be the Messiah? He was, he was dead. See, doubts come when our expectations are not met. When we believe that God is going to act a certain way, he's going to provide a certain way, he's going to heal a certain way, he's going to come through a certain way, and when he doesn't come through that way, we're disappointed. See, doubt is usually birthed in disappointment, as it was in this story. I I begin to doubt when things aren't turning out the way I, I thought they would the way I prayed that they would, the way I thought God should do it. It's not happening that way. And I begin to doubt and I say, God, if if you're really so good and you're really so powerful, then why is this happening to me? Some of us are probably asking that question in this season, right? 
I know a lot of high school seniors right now are saying, God, why did my high school last part of my year, my graduation, prom, everything getting canceled? God, why? Some of you have lost your jobs and you're probably wondering, God, if you're all powerful and you care about me, then, then why did you let me lose my job? Why, why is this pandemic even happening? If God, you're so good, then why are these bad things taking place? And I would bet that just about every one of us have asked that question at one point or another in our life. Maybe um, there's some sickness, some illness in your family that you've prayed for God to heal for so long. And man, it just doesn't seem like the reports get any different. Maybe you're dealing with a financial crisis and, and this whole COVID-19 thing is just added to the pressure of how you're supposed to provide for your family. Maybe what you're facing is something that took place long before COVID-19 ever showed up. Someone that hurts you, that was supposed to protect you and love you and you've carried those scars with you and it's made you ask God, God, if you're so good, why do you allow these bad things to happen? Why did you allow it to happen to me? Why, God, I don't understand. And I want you to know if you've ever asked those questions, you're not alone and we all have. And I want you to know also that it's okay to question God. He can handle it. In fact, when I, when I read the Bible, I see men and women that are constantly questioning God. Abraham questioned God. Moses questioned God. David wrote a bunch of Psalms where a lot of them were just about, God, why have you forgotten me? How long will it be until you come through for me? Oh God, where are you, right? Many of us are playing that tape right now, right? Let me tell you, you can be real with God. You, you, he already knows what you're thinking about, so you might as well talk to him about it. So anytime that you ask that question, God, why do bad things happen? Why are bad things happening to me? Why are bad things happening in this world? You gotta go back to a couple of foundational truths that we, we have to stand on. And the first is God created everything really good. One of our young adult pastors this past week is the young adults online are, are asking some of these harder questions. They said, the loving God I know never intended for anything to be bad to happen. From the very beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth back in Genesis, what did he do? He stood back and said, it is good. Everything was good. The original version was completely perfect. There was no, no death. There was no sickness. There was no cancer. There was no COVID-19. It was paradise on earth. But, but God gave people the ability to choose. See, he set you and me apart above all creation and he made you in his image and he gave you a God consciousness so that you and I could make moral choices. We had choices that we get to make. And when we read in Genesis, we see that mankind chose to rebel against God. And from the very beginning, that choice has had consequences that we are feeling to this very day. And the truth is, anytime we we choose to go against God's ways. We deal with, with consequences. And let me just say this, as we deal with some doubt issues today and we ask maybe some questions that we're wrestling with today, I understand there is no one pat answer that can address every problem. My goal isn't to try to answer all your questions, but to, to point you to the source of truth. See, Jesus never promised that you and I wouldn't have problems. Anybody that tells you, oh, you just give your life to Jesus and all your problems will go away, they are lying. They are reading some different Bible. Because what I read in Jesus's words here in John 16, he says, in this world, you will have trouble. He doesn't say you might have trouble, like maybe a couple times. So he says, you will have trouble. But then he says, take heart, don't be discouraged. Won't you say it with me out loud? I have overcome the world. So we should expect trouble. And this isn't the kind of trouble like your Wi-Fi is down. Although I know that would be trouble right now, but that's not what he's talking about here. He's not talking about you dropped your phone and the front cover cracked on it. He's not talking about that. He's talking that word trouble means affliction and tribulation and even persecution. And so Jesus says those things are gonna come into your life, but he says, don't be overcome by them because I have overcome them. I've overcome all the troubles and the, and the problems of the world so you can find courage in me. 
You can find strength in me. I will see you through. There's a verse in Romans 8, 28 that many of you may be familiar with. In fact, why don't they put it up on the screen because I want you to say it with me out loud in all your living rooms, wherever you are right now, say this with me out loud. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Leave that up for a minute. We know, we don't hope, we don't think, We know that God causes everything to work together for good. It doesn't say that everything that happens to us is good, but it says that God has the power to take even what the enemy meant for evil and to turn it and use it for our good. You know what that verse tells me? It tells me that God's power over the enemy's problems that he throws at you is is a promise that you can hold on to. That in the moment it may not feel good and this moment doesn't feel good. There's some things you're walking through that doesn't feel good. But I want to tell you, God's word says he will even take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. Even when you can't see it, he's working. Even when you can't feel it. And let me tell you, most of the time I can't see it and I don't feel it. And so by faith, I have to say, God, I'm going to go back to your promise that even when I can't see it, you are working. This week I had a a Zoom call with a man in our church. His name is Chris. Chris. And um, I want you to hear Chris's story and then I want you to jump in on our Zoom call. Watch this. As an 18 year old kid, I was playing college football in Decorah, Iowa at Luther College. I lined up on the right side of the field, the ball's kicked and I run, I dive, but I mistimed my jump just by a split second. In an instant, I lose all feeling and movement from my neck down. I wake up on October 17th, 2010, thinking I just had the worst nightmare of my life. But then the surgeon comes in and my nightmare becomes my reality. He says, Chris, you have a 3% chance of ever regaining any feeling or movement back below your neck. I was stunned, but sometimes God has a better plan for you than the plan you had for yourself. Growing up, I had an amazing family. Um, We lived in Muscatine, Iowa. I prayed in high school. I said, God, I just want you to use me. I want you to use me to bring you to others and to just help others know that they are loved and that they are special and chosen and that you have great plans for their lives. About nine months after my injury, I returned to campus and I set the goal that I'm gonna walk across the stage of my college graduation. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I was just gonna work as hard as I possibly could to make it happen. And so I poured in as much as I could into this graduation walk. When I first met Chris, I had felt like I always knew him. It was way easier um, just to talk to him. He was such a great listener and we instantly were connected. I thought Emily was the one right when I met her. I mean, she was way out of my league. She was beautiful, even more beautiful on the inside than the outside, which is saying something. And she just has this heart of gold where she just wants to help others. She always is giving. I knew that if I had Chris, that everything was gonna be okay in life. Walking Emily down the aisle of our wedding was such a beautiful moment to share with her, someone I love more than anything in the world. Foster parent is by far the best thing I've ever done. It is my passion. I truly believe it's the reason that I'm here. I thought I was disqualified to be a foster parent because of my situation, but God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. God was so present in our lives. It helped stretch my heart and open me to do even more than what I thought was possible. The transformations and miracles that God has performed in kids' lives, and it is amazing to be able to be a part of that every single day of just spreading love and helping these kids realize how special and loved and chosen they truly are. My faith has given me the courage to go forward. Uh, It gave me hope, uh, this light at the end of the tunnel when I was first hurt. I want others to know that life's lowest moments can be our greatest blessing and that we can use those moments to help others, to give back, make a difference, make the world a better place. Uh, God has a beautiful way of putting messes together 
And so no matter how broken you are, no matter how lost you are, keep going. Hey, Chris, good to see you, my friend. Thanks for taking a few minutes to, uh, to speak with me today. I'm glad to hear that you and Emily and all the kids are doing really good. You have a full house, don't you? Yeah, thanks, Pastor Todd, for the call. Yes, we have a very full house. This is a very special moment right now. It's quiet. <laughs> it's probably rare. You knew you had to very talk rare. You sent the kids away. That's great. It's very um, nice. You know, Chris, your story is so powerful. What God has done in your life, um, I know it hasn't been easy. Uh, you found yourself in the middle of this unexpected crisis that you had to walk through years ago. And I'm finding right now, while we're in the middle of this crisis that the world's going through, that people are falling on one of two sides when it comes to God. Some are reaching out to God and they're searching for hope and, and truth, but others are pushing back and they're questioning God in this season. And they're saying, God, why are you letting this happen? Why are you letting this happen to me? You know, if you're so good, why are you letting something so bad happen? And I thought about you this week when everything you went through in your life was feeling so bad. What did that do to your faith? And more specifically, how did you deal with doubt? Well, I had a lot of doubt. I mean, I can remember waking up after surgery and thinking I just had the worst nightmare of my life. And then the surgeon comes in and tells me I have a 3% chance of ever moving again. Not walking, moving. And at 18 years old, I thought I was invincible. So my life got completely flipped upside down. And I've always grown up with faith. My parents brought me to church. Even sometimes I complain about it. They brought me along. And I, anyone who would ask me, I would say I had a faith. But at that moment, I questioned it. I was like, God, you're supposed to be right and know all. But how can you get me through this mess? Like, seriously, like, you got your hands full with this one. Like, how can I ever live a good life when everything I'd known before this was being an athlete, was being this macho, strong, manly man, and that was all gone. And so I remember nights where I just cried myself to sleep, and I was just trying to fight this urge to fall into the darkness, but I knew there was this light at the end of the tunnel, that God had a path, had a plan. I had no idea what that is, and I had times where, again, like I said, I questioned it, but I believed it. And so thankfully, like through my dad, he would read me scriptures at night because at nighttime was the worst. That's when I wanted to just fall apart. And he would get into the Bible, read me scriptures, read me messages from other people. People would come and visit me. So all those like little factors of just getting close to the word, even though I couldn't even open the Bible, I couldn't even get on the computer and like text on the phone. But just by him introducing that to me, nightly just kind of reinforced my faith because when you choose faith over fear it's not like a one-time choice it's a choice you have to make every day sometimes multiple times in a day so every single day by getting close to scripture uh, grouping up with my friends family being surrounded by loved ones really helped pick myself up during those early moments that's so good man um, do you remember times that, that you got angry with god yeah, there's plenty of times where I was mad. I was like, why did you choose this for me? Like, why, why me? Like, what makes me have to go through this? And I can remember just feeling if I could just get a glimpse into the future. Like, God, if you can just give me some small little window of why this is all happening, this would make this pain, this suffering so much easier. But God doesn't work that way. You got to believe in something that you can't see. And although I couldn't see it, I still just held on to that belief that with God, all things are possible. What was possible? I had no idea. But I'm thankful that I just kept choosing to follow him, follow that path, stay hopeful. Even when some people called it false hope, but hope is better. Her false hope is better than any hope. Mm. And uh, so I just kept working, kept grinding. And then, I've got myself to this point where I can now see all the pieces leading up to where I'm at now with a, a beautiful family. We have five girls that we've adopted. We have a little boy that we're fostering right now. Um, just so blessed to have a wife like Emily and then to travel the country sharing uh, inspirational messages 
books, documentary, and just so I can now see it all. But it took, that's 10 years in the making. It doesn't happen overnight. And I just encourage anyone who's going through the unexpected, like we all are, just to keep going. Even if you can't see where you're going or where God's leading you, just follow. And it's like driving without the lights on, your headlights on in the dark. You just got to go and trust. That's right. You know, and, and I think it's so important, too, that uh, even when you, when you doubt, uh, which we all deal with doubt, doubt's not bad. Doubt is actually what causes us to search for truth. Uh, we go, God, are you real? Are you really there? Are you really hearing my prayer? What do I do now? And it really has to do with where you look, where you keep your focus. Um, I'm sure when you were walking through what you had to go through, Chris, uh, there were days that you looked down or you felt down and that's where your eyes went. Uh, but then other days you had, to, you had to force yourself to look up. Just talk briefly about that before we, before we go. Every single time I was tested with my faith and I started to look down, I started to doubt. Those were the moments when I knew I needed to look up. That's the moment that reinforced my faith and that I needed to look up. And it just were reminders of those choices that we get to make. And uh, those the really small choices. Again, it's getting back to scriptures. It's being around positive people. And those things really allowed me to, instead of look down, look up. That's so great. Well, Chris, as I've said to you before, you and Emily are an inspiration to so many of us. We are blessed that you're a part of our church family and uh, your impact and your story needs to be told to more and more people because you, have, you are making such a huge difference. So I want to thank you for keeping your eyes on Jesus through your crisis, because as you've walked through what you've walked through, you're building faith up in other people and you've built faith up in me as your pastor. And I want to tell you, I love you. Uh, praying for you and Emily during this time for your family. That God will bless you guys. We love you so much. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Love everybody. All right. Bye-bye. I love Chris and Emily and their family and what God's doing through them. Uh, it's such a powerful story. In fact, he's got a great book out. If you've not read it, it's on Amazon. You can grab it. It's powerful. But one of the things he said in that, in that phone conversation was that when doubt tried to pull him down, God used the people around him to pull him up. And it reminds me of this story with Thomas and the disciples. So let me give you a few thoughts on Thomas and how we can deal with our doubt. The first is this, even when Thomas didn't know what to think, he knew where to go. Think about that for a minute. Even when he didn't know what to think, he knew where to go. He was dealing with doubt, but he wasn't hanging out with other doubters, right? He, he got around some people who had seen something he hadn't seen people that had experienced something that he hadn't experienced yet. His association brought about a revelation. You hear me say all the time, it matters who you hang with, right? If you've been around Christ Fellowship very long, you've heard me say, show me your friends and I'll what? Say it with me, show you your future. That's right. It matters who you hang with. Think about it. Where was Thomas when this doubt started? He was by himself. He, he was the only disciple that was not with the group when Jesus appeared to the disciples right after the resurrection that first time. He was alone. He was, he was separated from his spiritual brothers. And let me tell you, it is never Jesus's intention for you to follow him in isolation. Right. It's meant to be done together in community. The apostle Paul is the one that writes in Romans chapter one, my faith will help you and your faith will help me. We're better together. Our faith is, is stronger together. When I fall down, you can pick me up. When you fall down, I'm there to pick you up. So even when you have doubts and deal with them, especially when you're dealing with doubt, you need to surround yourself with people of faith so that you can grow stronger through this time. See, doubt is actually an opportunity to grow when you think about it. James chapter one, verse three says, the testing of your faith produces endurance, right? Think about that, the testing of your faith. Doubt is your faith being tested when things aren't turning out the way you, you thought, when, when God doesn't perform the way that you want him to. So the question in those times is, are you gonna run towards God or run away from God? Are you gonna hold on to Jesus, the source of hope, even when things are looking hopeless or are you gonna push away from Jesus and, and, and blame him? Even when you don't know what to think, you can know where to go because some of you today, you're dealing with doubt. 
You don't know what to think about this season that we're in as a nation. You've had some situations go on in your family that you're probably asking God, do you even care about me? Do you, do you even hear me? You may not what, know what to think, but let me tell you, you can know where to go. You've got to do what Thomas did. You've got to get around some people that have strong faith and their faith is going to build you stronger. That's why as we're starting all of these online classes this Get Stronger Challenge, all these, these groups are so that you can have right in the comfort of your own, own home, you can, you can group up with other people of faith. If, if you're struggling with doubt, there's, there's one class that's called Alpha. And if you're young in your faith, um, you're, you've got some questions about faith in God, man, that is a safe place, that Alpha class for the next eight weeks to ask some questions, just to be open and honest. And it's not just for people that are doubting. It's also for those of us that have people that ask us questions about God. And we're like, I'm not quite sure, right? The Alpha class, I mean, thousands of you need to go sign up for Alpha because it's gonna give you the strength to be able to, to grow in your faith and help others grow in their faith. So the first step in dealing with doubt is even when you don't know what to think, you can know where to go. You can turn to other people. You can lean into the people of God. The second thing that I see in this story for us is found back in verse 27. It says this, that then he, Jesus said to Thomas, reach here with your finger and see my hands and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not be unbelieving or do not doubt, but believe. So we've got to do what Thomas did. We have to reach for Jesus. Sometimes in our doubt, we push away from God. Sometimes in our doubt, we get frustrated with God and angry with God and we, we question God, but that's not gonna change anything if we do that. What changed everything for Thomas is when he reached out for Jesus. And let me just tell you, when you seek the truth, you will find it. He, he, Jesus wants you to, to find it. God promised it in Jeremiah 29, 13. He said, when you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart, if you seek for truth with an open heart, God will get you there, I promise. There, there's a verse in, in James chapter four, verse eight that says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Which basically means as you reach out for God, he's gonna reach back for you. So how do we do this? How do we reach out for Jesus in the middle of maybe our questions and our anxieties and our worries? A couple ways. Number one, you're doing it right now. <laughs> You're already here in this moment, reaching out, reaching out for Jesus. So let me just encourage you, keep this up. Make this a priority, our time of gathering together for worship. It may not look like it's looked like in the past. For some of you, you're loving it, being able to sit at home in your pajamas and join us for church. That's awesome, right? But make this a priority. And as life begins to pick up and get busy again here in a few weeks or several months, whenever it does, don't disqualify, don't, don't de-emphasize your pursuit of God and how important this is to set for the rest of your life. So keep this up. The second thing I would, I would say is you've got to open the word. Yeah. It says in John chapter one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God yeah. and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It's talking about Jesus being the very word of God. So when you get in here to the word, Jesus is gonna meet you right here. And what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be feeding your faith. See, I believe that we need to doubt our doubts and feed our faith. So good. Doubt your doubts and feed your faith. What do you mean doubt your doubts, Todd? Well, when doubt comes in, I believe you need to go, where's that thought coming from? Where, where the, where is, that? is that coming from some disappointment, some expectation I put on God? Is that coming from some place that I feel like maybe he let me down and didn't come through the way I, I thought he should? I mean, do I get everything I want? Is it, is it maybe um, I think I know better than God? Or maybe um, I forgot that this is in heaven. This is not the land of the living. We're actually in the land of the dying. There is a place that is our home. This isn't our home. The Bible says we're just passing through. And so sometimes we get the wrong perspective of what this place is supposed to be. And so doubt your doubts. Why am I feeling that way? Why am I thinking that way? Where are those thoughts coming from that God doesn't care about me? Well, I can guarantee you it's not coming from God, right? right? 
So doubt your doubts. And then secondly, feed your faith. Every time you open up this book, you are feeding your faith. It says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the, say it with me out loud, the word of God. Every time you get in this book, you are feeding your faith. See, I can't begin to answer all the questions you might have today, but I can point you to the one that, that does. His name is Jesus, and through his Holy Spirit, this word will come alive, which is why we have these classes that are coming up for you to jump in, because you maybe have tried to read the word before, and you've had a hard time doing it. We want to help you. Pick a class. We're not, it shouldn't be the question, am I going to get into a class during this Get Stronger? The question should be, which class am I getting into? Can I make two work? I want to, I want to grow myself, and, and as you do, you're going to get stronger. And the third way that we reach out to Jesus is you not only open the word, but you open your mouth and that's prayer. I heard someone once say that you take your doubts and you turn them into questions and you take your questions and you turn those into prayers and then you let your prayers turn you to God. Leave that up for a minute. Think about it. When the doubt comes in, you just turn that into a question. God, uh, here's what it is. Here's what I'm struggling. You take that question, turn it into a prayer. Let me bring it before you. Would you help me understand what I'm struggling with here? And when you do that, that, that turns you to God in prayer. And I want you to see this at the end of the story here. Jesus doesn't rebuke Thomas for doubting. He's not mad at him. He doesn't jump his case. and like, oh, doubting Thomas. No, we put that name on him. Jesus didn't. Jesus just says, reach out and touch my hands. Reach out and touch my scars, Thomas. See, let me help you believe is what he was saying. Let me help you see the very thing that you need to see. And here's what I know. I believe if you will reach out to Jesus right now in the middle of your doubts or in the middle of your questions, he's gonna help you see what you need to see. He's gonna help you understand right in the middle of your, the doubt that's trying to take you out, he's gonna pull you in closer than ever before. Because even when you doubt God, he still believes in you. I wanna pray two prayers for us today. The first prayer that I wanna pray is that all of us would use this time wisely. Listen to me, it's not gonna be like this forever. And some of you are like, thank God, right? But right now, many of us have more time in our lives because we don't have the, the little league games to go to, we can't go to the movie, can't go to the, the mall, can't do these other things, can't, some of you can't go to work. You've got time. I want you to, I'm praying that God will help you redeem this time and that you will come through this stronger. Get in the word, get into prayer, start family prayer. Dads, take the lead on this. You're, you're the spiritual leaders. Take the lead and just say, we're gonna pray. It doesn't have to be a long prayer, but man, start bringing prayer into the home. Get on this online class, get in these groups, redeem this time. I wanna pray that all of us will, I pray that each of us will come out of our quarantine like Thomas did with a greater revelation of who Jesus is. Thomas was quarantined up in that room. He came out with a revelation. I'm praying that for you in this season. The second prayer that I wanna pray for those of you that need to get your life right with God. You actually need to personally declare what Thomas said, my Lord and my God. It was a personal declaration of faith. And some of you have never made that personal declaration that God, you are, Jesus, you are my Lord. I invite you in to be my Lord. And so I wanna help you right now find that peace and that hope that he wants to bring you today. Would you bow your heads as we pray together? God, I wanna thank you that your word teaches us and reminds us of how we can even respond in times of crisis and times of doubt, that Jesus, you are helping us to understand. And you're right there just waiting for us to reach out for you. Lord, I pray that every one of us in this season, that God, we would reach out for you. That they, Lord, we would, we would lean into the people of God and that God, we would reach out for the person of God, Jesus Christ and that we would experience you like never before in this season, that we would come out stronger spiritually, more enriched in our faith than ever before. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you need to make a personal confession of faith today in Jesus and get your life right with God, the Bible says when you do, he steps in, he forgives you of your sin and he makes a place for you in heaven with him. But that's gotta be a personal declaration just like it was for Thomas. It needs to be personal for you. And so I wanna lead you in this prayer and I want all of us to pray it out loud 
But some of you today, this needs to be your prayer. So right where you are, would you just slip your hand up? I can't see it, but guess who can? Jesus can. So I want you to slip your hand up and say, this is my prayer today. And pray this after me out loud. Everybody just say, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Come into my life. Be the Lord over my life. I surrender to you. Forgive me of all my sins. Fill me with your peace and your presence. And I'll follow you the best I know how for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer today, you just made the most important decision of this life because it changes this life and the life to come. And we'd love to pray with you. If you would just text the word CONNECT to 441-441, we would love to send you a card you can fill out. Let us know so that Julie and I can be praying for you this week in Jesus' name. We love you so much. Have a beautiful week in Jesus. We'll see you at prayer. Thanks so much for watching Christ Fellowship Church on YouTube. We hope that you've enjoyed this week's message. For more content just like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you have a great rest of your week. God bless.